introduce our next presenter, um, Ishaka Shishu. Um, he's going to deliver a presentation on port performance and crude oil exports, um, logistics system distribution in Nigeria. And then we'll have to look forward to you. All of us. Thank you for coming. I'm Ishaka Shishu. I'm a top of and uh, like the person's journey with the US. Uh, I'll be talking before I start. I think I will make it a bit interactive stuff. I'm very sure all of us, one way or the other, we, we, we have shipped something, we buy good goods and then we ship it. I'm very sure no one going to ship something and then costs. Expensive stuff. You should not charge so much. I'm very afraid whether any of us here has <coughs> and the final is where we all come in and then go into big civilization to do, to get uh, what we use as a source of energy in homes and us. We should all of us pay bills. So uh, the resource of energy which is uh, it's very important as a as a as a vital source of energy in the world. So Nigeria as a country, before I start, uh, this is my background. Uh, problem statement, literature review, this is a major time in Nigeria and six major template. This is a paper that's going to tell us the process I followed in getting some improvement strategies to prioritize import efficiency in Nigeria. Background. Generally, uh, Nigeria is a country in West African region that found oil in 1956 in the United States. And uh, it has major presence of all major international oil companies, even the BP in the early 70s, 60s. However, the major ones are Exxon, Global, Total, and Total. And then numerous numbers of business companies operating these days. And the uh, proven oil reserves are around 37 billion so far, and there are more to come because there are technology going on to explore more oil. My aim of my work is to explain to us the supply chain of oil. And what's the meaning of supply chain? It's just simple. All the planning and management of all activities involves in transporting oil, coordination of all those activities and logistics for the benefit of benefit, uh, possible costs to a consumer. It's an oil trader, and it's an economy holder. And then the end users are we who that buy energy in our homes, petrol to, to transport. So that is the logistic of oil. So exploration is an in, is an output for production, production output for refinery. So that is the logistic of oil. And uh, Nigeria actually, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, on international uh, oil markets. So come to the news, of course, as uh, we should have to with uh, and Banalizi and uh, sabotage from the oil rich region of Delta, actually, uh, which is even over the years, that's over three to eight billion dollar plus according to set up out of all 2015 uh, to oil trade and like vandalisms. So, but statistic of oil uh, basically is new field, statistics generally is new field and actually is still evolving. Books and Pali. These are my problem statements. Peak oil demand. What peak oil demand? Uh, as we know, source of energy, of course, is, is still fossil oil in the next uh, two to three decades. I'm going to still agree on that. So, and uh, then that the shift towards uh, gas, uh, carbon storage investment, and the oil coins, in order to make sure that uh, how this agreement is being, is being, is being uh, compliant. And uh, over the, uh, just a few months away, they go. That's uh, concerned in Nigeria, and the stakeholders, either from international oil companies, uh, or from the state company, that's NPC, 
how to export the Nigerian group to, to get the best value for money. And that ends up statistic. And there are strong oil demand, of course, I'm afraid. Uh, just a few days ago, of course, the oil demand is around 100 million day per day, world consumption energy. And uh, I think it's still growing due to some, some projections in the international oil market. In 2016, 2014 to 2016, as a downturn in oil price, oil price, no money. Well, the majors are coming, everybody's complaining. And in Nigeria, this is like, so important in Nigeria, and even most African countries that have the oil receipts, source of revenue, because the revenue from oil is what keeps the social economy and political economy going. Most of the countries are afraid. And then, a day lost because of logistics error, and millions of them lost. And I think uh, uh, in 2016, the Financial Times actually reported that 219 percent tariff is being lost when you go to transport goods from Nigeria. And, uh, and as well, in 2016, the World Bank report that uh, the ease of doing business in Nigeria, Nigeria can go 182 among 185 countries. And as we know, trade will work with the ports. So, if the case of any country is in trade and in force. So, and then that will depend on what logistics of oil. And that's what I'm trying to look at here the performance of oil logistics in Nigeria, how can it be met effectively? And there uh, are established monthly tutorial review, which gives me an idea of what to do, of what I but that is complete, something complete before on some indicators of oil performances. I'm afraid that there are little reports, little, little studies on that. And uh, there are main productivity efficiency factors like that handling of cargo, mostly from container side. Container time, because everybody ships stuff, as I said earlier in my lecture. Everybody ships stuff, we ship clothes, we ship everything, but I'm not going to ship oil, even you know, if you just give it because capital intensive market, which few. So there are little reports on, on water efficiency in, in, in other sector. More on content terminals, said they are our export terminals. As we know, and logistics, which is a, a key thing logistics is inventory, that's the, the capacity, the capacity of ports for terminals. And uh, in Nigeria, uh, especially, uh, if you look at uh, Exxon Mobil, take uh, Abani, Abani, uh, is a children site which export 210,000 barrels per day to the international oil market. So, extra goods is also a children. Uh, this are the capacity inventory. But how are efficient this inventory? How, are they, how is it cost to those who do their own this thing? Is it cost effective to maintain them? So, those are the issues that are going, that are going to be raised. As we go on, this is, this is a conceptual model of a export, export, uh, export map, which gives us the, the supply chain here. The oil prospecting license, which you have, the oil mining license, all these things are what a series of sequential activities with which different individuals are involved, and at governmental level. Rapid sector level, financial level, accounting level, the labor, it's that's, it. that's the aim of supply chain. So all those activities have come together. How efficient are they in Nigeria compared to not see in England here or in or Oman or maybe probably the UAC? That's where every everything is uh, that 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 determines what we do. So the first thing is that you create the license, you get the license for the oil regulator. You get export coming from the oil regulator and then exploration and production by the oil company, offshore distribution. That's where inventory comes in, safety checks, how are the numbers, the security officers, and then the oil company operators are able to secure those stuff. So they uptake. When are they going to ship the oil? Because the oil is a captive cargo, not just like container terminal. Ship quality assurance. How, how is this shipping ship? Is it well managed? Customary transfer, the inventory system. How many coins are you exporting? If we order for one standard barrel, one standard cargo is 350,000 plus or minus 10 percent, that's to one million barrel, and that might be on VLCs, very good carriers. So how 
had issues in Nigeria. Those so Nigeria even have crude uh, barriers, crude carriers. We will know later, of course. This is uh, the, as I said earlier, that we have, we spoke 2.1 million barrels of oil per day. Is it really the story here? So maybe we're still struggling to meet up to expectation of international market to the conclusion to the OPEC as OPEC member. So I think the latest is 2018 March of around 1.6. Yes, 1.8, I'm afraid. So you see, we, we still battling. We, we're we're on like a, a possibly Iraqi or, or, or Iran or Saudi that drop 10 million barrels a day. So we see, so these are the issues. The issues being raised from scoping interviews, I've, I've said this something uh, that sort of abstract. That gives how is a case study research actually, of course, which is this descriptive in nature. Certain phenomena in Nigeria, there are multiple sorts of data, 20 interviews, 10 interviews, semi here, some from scoping. And uh, these are the issues that are raised. Many percent of experts ex uh, agree to this as improvement strategies in Nigeria. The first one is the uh, presence of government officials during crude oil loading operations. So, area monitoring systems, K96, supplying, simplifying cargo, shifting and marketing, is still 96 or so. Uh, modern technology for capturing shipping document, increasing security, both platform and capacity. So the way I analyze them, this is my, am I sampling? But the very key issue is this, who am I interviewing? Who, are, who is answering my question? Who is answering my question? That is why I bring this thing to all of us to see those are the people engaged in actual experts in the oil supply chain. Uh, three, uh, interview of the three traders in London, regulators, uh, interview the marine pilot who's in the, in the um, field. So the analysis, how did that come about it? I try to make sure I have 20 of them as, as, as I can see in sample selection and uh, everybody agree to this to statistical description statistic is the issue now. I try to score everybody and what came is 96 for metering Length is for capital shipping documents. That's infrastructure wise, I'm afraid. So if an item related agree, that means four. Strongly agree and agree is four. But what is the is the ordinary data? How are, how do we know whether the distance between ordinary variation, variation of variation between three and uh, two, two, one and two, or three and four? So that's something I, I make with you bit, I'm afraid, because the mental human mind has mental representation of numbers, actually. So another side, what is the average of something that we agree in this context? Another statistical parameter, maybe mean, mean is not, maybe mode, that's fine. Frequencies of occurrences, that sounds great. Any one on which the someone do not agree, so it's not included. So frequency of who do not agree are this. And uh, the like scale, which as I said actually helps to prevent universal effects. And uh, how do I prioritize uh, all these improvement strategies that have been agreed by the, all of us on the next one that's one there. And I think that uh, we should do this. And I think it is true. And it's what I think was this. Is it technical, structure, based on mathematics and psychology, which was invented by the Mossadi in 1980. I uh, was actually gives me the ability being a subjective approach, some constructive approach, balanced approach, and a constructive approach. So from this expert opinion, there are, there are experiences that makes a suite appear suitable because it gives me effective to with complex decisions. There are a lot of issues in Nigeria. All in the from investment, the security, uh, labor, what they build, the examiner. But the key issue is this the ASP will give you the, uh, the idea to prioritize those things and then be on policy makers of how to, be, to improve the logistics of oil, to make it a reliable supply of oil in the international market. But the aim is to pass. The challenge is that Nigeria has to improve to be able to, to give the world a secure, efficient, effective oil supply. 
to Indian energy. And that is very particular for sustainable development energy supply chain in the world. So the conclusion is this. For scope interview, as we done systematically, methodologically, I guess a systematic decision analysis structure by the by interviews of professional expert opinions. So the age actually gives you those implications on how to optimize and sustainable organization strategy might match on this. So limitations, not to, not to find limitation in life. So lack of access to business model because I'm coming from the broadcast theory. And the aim of broadcast theory is the market share competitors. We have the US, we have the UAE, we have the American countries, some of them are coming up now. We have, we have the England also, not see. Well, however, of course, the operations of oil, because of the cyclical nature of oil, it is actually to NASA, it goes back to Maine, it goes back to the Academies, it comes back to come back to New York, of course, because it involves a lot of documentary, documentary instruction, bank, reviews, etc. a lot of course, in the export market. So, that's a, I don't want to get the business model, which may be some of the interviews, release some of the information, the interviews from experts, but some supply chain members decline to talk. Now, the broadcast cost of data to build consensus modeling. However, I get data on how to handle it, how the best set can do, how the poor can handle the best set. Now, I'll build consensus model on that to show seasonal flows of oil in some of the different export terminals. So, access of course data. Future research. I hope that uh, theories generated by this study should be tested against the order could oil export to countries in Africa. That's the related uh, theory. In part of information sharing, import efficiency, of this system is another cause of concern. Post security for sustainable performance and good oil export logistics systems in Nigeria is another topic, a PhD topic, maybe role of artificial intelligence. Import efficiency of this system is another topic because the artificial intelligence appears to see up to 1.3 to 2.2 trillion dollar to of cost to companies according to McKinsey 2018. So the intelligence can apply in the pipeline and apply in 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 tracking all the documentary instructions which the different agencies in Nigeria are involved, the GPR, the budget of personal resources. We have the NPC, we have the oil points themselves, we have the everybody. So I think of uh, the role of digital te technology import competitiveness in oil transports. So this is our future research. And thank you for listening. Uh, for, thank you for listening. I'm very grateful for your time. So this is my picture while I was in the export terminal observing the loading operations in Nigeria. And uh, Thank you so much. optimization strategy to improve logistics. So that's the goal. So these are the sub criteria or these are the criteria. So I have a goal, I have a criteria, these are the seven criteria. What happened? Assuming okay, you're ranking this, all these things are important, right? And you're ranking one, let's say there's seven, one is number one, the other one is seven. So what does that mean? Like, where should we keep the number one and no, I think that is the aim of it. DHP gives you the ability. Uh, it doesn't give you the attempts that it depends on that trade off. So in this essence, if port, if, if uh, naval security, uh, that's number six. Information sharing and synergy between the naval terminal operators and and the general security forces is very important. Then 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 number one, that shows that. Uh, 
the trade-off is this. Uh, put it, how much does it cost you to put in some infrastructural development or human capital development here than the other one? So it doesn't say that the other one is not important. It's just kind of giving you uh, the equally important than these, but they're all important, of course. You know, as you know, the HP, uh, it, the scale is uh, equally important, more than, more than equally important, strongly important. So it gives you the hierarchy of how they're important and that you, as a time operator, you may look at it from a different lens. And time operator, I will look at that maybe my, my timelines are very strategic asset to me, of course. So I should ensure that I'm, I'm, I look at more of a time of security, making sure that uh, I, I bring more, more security, uh, automation security systems into my terminal. If you are you as a regulator, GPR, you might look at as, as, as a, a, a you in the council of uh, how can I make sure these people have been cleared, uh, bringing export time, export license or possibly oil license. How can they be? Uh, how can the Nigeria government or stakeholders make sure automations in documentary instructions, uh, export terminals, that are cost to do some flights and how, and then you have to think also the, the implication in policy in theory because uh, I'm afraid uh, Bill of Lading, which is very key in the, in the, in the document and the scientific quantity of oil and grade, nobody will take it from me or you if it's not original. So diversity will have to be there and that has, that's the more rich, isn't it? And that's costs. Or myself, as a trader from London, maybe from Glencoe Oil Energy. So, so that is a trade-off. That gives you the trade-off. It's not, it's not end, end to say the HP, but it gives you a kind of a fair idea that this is going well. This is what I would take from this perspective, my own perspective of operator, of regulator, of ship captain, because I'm driving the ship, I sell the ship. <laughs> so you expect me that uh, I don't want to leave a bony or, or a bunny going to Rotterdam and uh, something happened hijacking along the way. So I should be expecting that uh, the government or the operators will put in more money on IAS, automated automation instruction system, and uh, also issue that has to do with uh, making sure naval securities, regional security, naval security, of course, in, uh, is, being, is being well achieved. And that has to do with a uh, lot of things, of course. So the whole logistic of oil, I'm afraid, is internationally uh, business. That's it. And uh, virtually everyone involved from the government, to the regulator, to business stakeholders, captain of industries. So it's all everybody thinks from different lengths. But they, would, they might work. Since Nigeria is, is a key West African trade, trading hub, for it to maintain our competitiveness for the drug security perspective, it must improve the image. And how can you, and these are the driver for change. This is not a new topic, I'm afraid. People have written lots of work. Maybe uh, Dr. Sarah Talk work on the commercial commissioner of port in southwestern England and then Bill and the jury, fine. But little work has been done on port efficiency in oil export transport. But there are work maybe on jetty, on information flow network in the uh, Alanka, North Sea, uh, Alaska uh, uh, export terminal, a few on the NIMPO. So just for no one, I'm afraid that's talking much on the, the supply chain, how everybody is involved, the engagement of professional stakeholders, and, and then thinking from, uh, from that, that perspective. For people who are Britain, even Nokia uh, and John DeWoon, they are Britain on cold oil flows. Sorry, tell a talk on cold oil flows and then mention some of the few things I've raised. If you look at my abstract, that'll be good. Because uh, I'm afraid uh, it's, it's just work in progress. The future research I've, 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 I've thrown out, I think this are the cause for concern for stakeholders in the country, of course. I'm afraid that uh, uh, it's about lots of things. Legislation by the IMO, which is very key in Nigeria, is ISPS code, International Security for Security. Because the issue is this, if you are buying something and then you're not getting value for money, what is the end of this the customer? I'm not sure whether I'm going to buy tomorrow there. Yeah. So I think for we to remain as a competitive age over some de developing countries or sort of other countries, we must make sure we do this thing 
it implies lesson for us. Thank you so much for your question. Any other question, please? Yes. And then in AHP, it lacks consistency. So you have to subject it to another model to check whether the outcome is consistent. Which model are you using or will you be using to check your outcome if it suits the target or the, uh, the objective that you seek to achieve? Thank you. Uh, so that is uh, software. Which is uh, I forgot the name software. Sorry, uh, but the key thing is this here. My AC was done manually through Excel, and uh, core researchers uh, look at my uh, my work, what I did, and they look at it from their own perspective, having had the experience on that. So the consistency ratio is given a priority because I know that's where the issue in the CI, isn't it? So, and then uh, right as to less than 10 10 percent, that's 0 0.1. So, anything less than that, nothing. So, which means the, the decision maker perspective in ranking or making sure how he or she takes actually is not consistent. So, uh, co researchers have done that, but there's a software which we requested. The university does not have access to that. I think uh, I've forgotten the name of software. But that's a key area of concern, so which I've raised in my analysis. Thank you. Are you sorry? It's more like mm -hmm. when you're using HP, if, if there's a consistency, doesn't mean you have to change the equation. No, you cannot use the data until it's consistent. So you can go back again to the person you interview over the data, say, okay, what you are saying is not consistent. Because HP is saying A. Is better than B, B is better than C, so automatically A is better than C. So if some person is telling you A is better than B, B is better than C, and same person tell you C is better than A, mm. it means it's not consistent. So so another way of addressing it, you can probably he um didn't understand the question, you can go back to the same person, okay. This is what I meant by this and this and this. And by the time you answer the question correctly, it should be consistent. That's why there's consistent consistency index in, 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 in ASV. So it doesn't mean you have to change your methodology. It means probably you have to replace your question, maybe you didn't replace it well. So that's what you should pay attention to when you are um, when you are adapting uh ASP uh, instrument. Yes, but let's say change your methodology. And to shed more light to you, you know, uh the if you are been uh, nine, 10, 19 people and uh, there are different CI, that's a consistency index. So you just pick, for the benefit of doubt, you pick the one that is consistent and then you leave the other one. But however, in research, you have to explain those ones that are not stay within the 0 0.1. So I think what Nasser raised is a very wonderful perception. So you, you, must, not, you must not have to change it methodology. However, they've given you a fair idea of what is happening. So thank you so much. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to draw it to a close. Thank you so we're much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to thank all of you for this morning. It's been a very interesting, um, encouraging um, session.